This is the tan ratio. I'm going to sol uh, solve for sides and cover this as an addendum to my last video because um, I didn't cover that for some reason. So here we go. I'm just going to run through a few examples here. It's not too, too hard. So we'll see how this works. Again, I'm going to label these sides. So from my angle, I have the opposite. And right next to it, I have what's called the adjacent. Just so you know which one goes on the top and bottom of your fraction. So I set up my ratio. I know it's opposite over adjacent because tan is TOA, opposite over adjacent. So I have tan of my angle 41 is equal to my opposite, which is x, over my adjacent, which is 18. So this tan 41 is just calculator work. So I type in 41, I hit tan, I get 0 0.869, and that's equal to x over 18. The next step is algebra. And your algebra steps are, how do I solve for x? How do I get it on its own? Well, right now it's being divided by 18. So the opposite of division is multiplication. So I multiply by the bottom value, which is 18, and I multiply both sides by 18. On the right side, the 18 cancels with the bottom. So on the left side, I have my 0 0.869 times by 18, which is equal to 15.6. So 15.6 is equal to x. That's how to solve if your number is on the bottom and you can just uh, simply multiply. The second example here, same thing, I'm still going to label my sides. So right across from my angle 25, I have the opposite. And right next to it, I have the adjacent. So I'm still using tan. And remember, tan is opposite over adjacent. So my opposite side this time is y. My adjacent side this time is 25. So then what do I do? Same thing as before, tan of, whoops, I forgot my angle, 25 degrees. So tan of 25 degrees, that's what I would work out first. 25, then hit tan, so it's 0 0.466 is equal to y over 25. And they, then again, with algebra, I multiply by my 25 on both sides to get rid of it on the bottom. So I have point, uh, 0.466 times by my 25, which is equal to 11.7. Uh, okay, let's look at a real world example here. What if you're standing and looking up at a tree, and I've done this with my grade 11 or grade, yeah, 11 or 10 class before, where I've gone outside, we've had these things where we could measure the angle to the top of a tree, and you can actually use a measuring tape to measure your distance from the base of the tree. So just like before, I would label my side. So right across, and I'm trying to figure out how tall the tree is. So right across from my angle is my opposite, which I don't know. And adjacent, I do know, which is 13 feet. That's what I measured. So I know it's tan again. Remember that tan is opposite over adjacent. So let's call this value x. Let's call the adjacent, or the, uh, yeah, the adjacent, the bottom is going to be 13. I forgot my angle again, if you're doing that. So it's going to be tan of 13. Don't write tan, just something, sorry. So tan of 13, my degrees, my 13. Tan of 68, which is my angle, equals x over 13. So again, I'm looking for my height. So how do I do this? Oh, right, yes, I solve for 13, tan of 13 first. So I have 13 tan, oops, 13, tan, so I get 0.233, or 0.23. Now notice that you know the numbers on the bottom right now, so I'm going to have to multiply by 13. So you can do it all in one step if you want to. So my x value is going to be equal to 3 feet. So it's a very short, very short tree. So tan of 68 was 0. Point, remember? So 68 tan was... Um, 2.47. How did I get the other one? Let's try that one more time. 68 tan is 2.47. That makes more sense. <clears throat> so 2.47. Notice how my answer was odd. I noticed, well, that tree is really short, so I redid it. Now what do I do with that? Is I multiply by my 13 on both sides. So 2.47 times 
13 is equal to 32. That's a little better. 32.17 feet is equal to x. So that's how high my tree is. Just make sure that your answers make sense. I'm just going to go through one more example because sometimes when you're solving these questions and you're given your angle of say 20 degrees, let's say we're given this side this time. Let's say that's 10. And now I'm looking for this bottom side. So we set it up the same way, only this time my opposite is going to be 10 and my adjacent is going to be x. So I have tan of 20 equals, what's my opposite? 10. Over what's my adjacent? x. Same thing as before. 20, 10 is 0.364. 0 0.364 is equal to 10 over x. Now notice all the times before I multiply by the bottom, multiply by the bottom. You can still do that here, only this time, what are you multiplying by? Well, I'm multiplying by, I know that's going to look like an x. I'm multiplying by x to cancel it off at the bottom, but I have to also multiply the other side by x. So what happens when I multiply by x? Well, on the right side it's gone, I'm left with just 10. And on the left side I'm left with 0.364x is equal to 10. Right? Now I still have to solve for x. I'm still trying to find that bottom side, but how do I do this now? Oh, right. So now this is 0.364 times x. In order to solve for algebra, you have to do the opposite operation. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to have to divide by 0.364 on both sides. Notice I wanted to solve for x. First of all, I had to multiply it out to get rid of it on the bottom, because it's on the bottom of a fraction. Now that it's off the bottom of the fraction, it now goes to the other side. And then to get it on its own, I have to divide, because right now it's being multiplied. So I have 10 divided by 0 0.364 is 27.5. So x is equal to 27.5. Notice this is how you solve if your x or your variable is on the bottom. This is how I usually do it. There are other ways that you can do it quicker. I guess there are some kind of a shortcut method, but this is, this is kind of the way that I do it. It makes more sense to me. Multiply the variable up, get it to the other side, and then use another more algebra to divide it to get it out. 27.5. So there's a good video showing tan ratio, how to solve for sides if the variable is on the top, and sides if the variable is on the bottom.